Hey guys, Old Guy Gaming here, back again with another MTG Arena video, and tonight we're going to be covering Mono Red Aggro. It is a format that has been a staple of Magic since the early, early days when I was playing, back when Covered Wagons and Black and White TV were all the big, th big rage. Um, it is a standard, it, this one is of course going to be for Guilds of Ravnica standard, so of course this one's a little bit more aggro oriented, and this is my own little twist uh, on the standard red deck. You're going to see a lot of the... The heavy hitters, the common features that you will find in any red aggro deck, but I also tossed in a couple of cards in there for the the eventual mirror match that you're going to have. So I always found that whenever you're playing against another red mono red deck, it's whoever goes first wins, and that's a little annoying. So I was trying to find a way to help balance that, and this is how I did it. So let's go ahead into the deck and take a look. All right, so here is the deck. Um, this is the, it's the way I decided to build this one out. Um, again, some of the stock standard cards that we're kind of used to. Four Fanatical Firebrands, Fantastic Hasting Creature. Uh, obviously comes down on the early turns and gets early damage. And then you can, of course, tap it to do one damage. Now, sometimes I can go to the player. Sometimes I can go to that annoying creature trying to get off the board. Super, super uh, utility kind of uh, card. Uh, the Guy 2 Lava Runner is a standard uh it comes in as one two and if you have more than two sorcerers or instance in your graveyard which eventually you will it also has a plus one in haste shocks standard <laughs> you need four of them so here is my counter to the mirror match and what i did is in a lot of areas in some of the rare cards not that i don't have them i do um but i decided to swap out one rare card here and there for the electrostatic field um this helps to slow down the aggro of other red decks as it is a zero four wall and you get the added benefit of every time you're casting a spell or sorcery it's doing an additional damage to your opponent now whenever it's the red on red um, mirror match that little bit of extra damage the two three four damage extra in a game that you can squeeze through is gigantic it could be the difference between a win and a loss to be honest so i've given these a try and i've had a, a lot of good uh results with it <clears throat> of course you've got to have three standard lightning strikes uh three steam uh, runaway steam cans these are amazing anytime you cast a red spell it just keeps getting bigger uh so the, the other trick with uh, a red decks is eventually, of course, you're going to burn out your hand relatively quickly because a lot of the stuff you have is one mana cost, two mana cost. So how do you go about uh, refilling the hand? Um, I know there's a lot of people using the experimental, um, the, the card from Guilds of Ravnica that allows you to do cards off the top. I found that sometimes that doesn't, very, it doesn't work well for my play style. I don't know what it is, um, but I always end up getting land. I don't really end up getting the cards I end up needing. So I split this up and I have two Flames of Keld. Uh, fantastic card. You discard your hand. It's going to be the last card you cast before you use it. The next turn gets you three. And then the next one, of course, helps double some of the damage that you're putting out. Now, the reason why I like this one over Risk Factor, which I also have two of, um, is because with Risk Factor, people can opt to take the damage which is good because it is doing four damage to the player. However, if you're really in dire need of those cards, it gives them an option to, re to remove that from your, your ability to do so. Um, so you really need the cards is really kind of what you're doing. So I did this doubled up with two of these and two of these to be able to kind of counter that. Two Vyrishino uh, Paramancers, cool little card, and of course does two damage automatically when it hits the ground. Uh, the Chain Whirler, fantastic card. Um, not only does it do one damage, this is this is absolutely awesome against a lot of the uh, the token decks that are out there right now where you got a whole bunch of 1-1 one -one tokens. This thing comes down, it's almost a board wipe that takes them all out, and it does an additional damage to the player. Fantastic. Um, we've also covered the Risk Factor. We've already covered this, and this helps you refill your hand, and does have the added benefit of having Jumpstart, so you can hang on to a mana that you don't necessarily need discard that and do it again um wizards lightning because we have so many wizards when you're looking to at the the lava runner is a wizard uh the pyromancer is a wizard um more often than not this comes down as a one casting cost lightning bolt um it, it fantastic little card love it uh two rekindling phoenixes this is kind of your late game uh winner if it gets the game gets too far this does allow you to go over the top with us four damage and of course if it dies it just comes back next turn with haste and then it's running 21 mountains. So that's the deck. Let's go play some uh, some best of ones with it and see how it does. Um, again, like with all of the other uh, Guilds of Ravnica standard decks that I'm doing, I did all of the... Um, what am I thinking? All of the starter decks. And I just kind of played best of ones with those. But now that we're getting into the more constructed decks that are playing in constructed, I know you guys really want to see them in the competitive standard. So that'll be the next video. So I'll do this in two parts. Lunchbox. I wonder if he's a Manson fan. 
And if you get that joke, you're as old as I am. Ooh, lightning strike, lightning strike, lightning strike. I got a whole lot of lightning. And a chain whirler. I might hang on to this. Let's see how it does. It has the ability to refill my hand. I've got enough damage. I'm looking at nine damage, 10 damage. Just I've got half of his life in my hand right now. I do need an additional mana, but I think I'll get to that. Yes, I'll keep, please. Be a gentleman and say hello. Ooh, two chain holders. That's awesome. This could go quick. Or it could not go at all. I saw the black <laughs> I saw the blue black and I'm like, I'm gonna see Thought Erasure. So I'm just gonna start lightning bolting him to death. No thought erasure. Interesting. Um, makes me wonder if he's got like an essence scatter on hand. I've got two of these. It's worth a shot. Sinister sabotage. Yep, that was the other one that I was concerned with. He might have. That's okay. I've got another. And at some point in time, he's gonna have to cast something. Disinformation campaign. I will discard my land. Thank you. Didn't need that. And now you do not have the ability to prevent me from doing this. Oh, this reward. Cool card. Alright, so he's going to make me discard cards, huh? Well, if that's the case, you can have that. You can have that. And then on my next turn, I'll discard Risk Factor. And then he's gonna chain. He's gonna bring back my chain whirler, which I'm going to lightning strike. Yeah, unless I get something really good on this hand, I'm probably going to risk factor this turn. And he's low enough now that taking that four damage might not be ideal. So he may just let me have the cards. Is he going to disinform? If he disinformation campaigns again, he's going to. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if this one flies. Sinister sabotage. That was worth a shot. He only has so many. That's the that's the downside to the Dremere, um surveil decks like this is they don't cover a they don't bring a lot to the table whenever it comes down to counters. He might have syncopates in there. You never know how he built his deck. Interesting enough, I've not seen another, any other creatures. So let's see if he lets me do that. Sure did. And I'll shock him for good measure. Really want to make sure... Dream here. Cool. I have nothing to return. And at this juncture, um, I mean, yeah, that's going to kind of stink, but... Hmm. Hmm. Do I want the Dreamkin to run with the four damage? I want the... Uh, I'm going to have to do it. Yep. I don't know if that was the correct correct play or not. He took the four. Casts another dream. Okay, so now this is getting a little silly. Getting a little concerned. Two Vyashin Repair and Pyrancers and I've got the game. information came. He's only doing that for the draw. <sighs> I really wish I had something else. He's going to end up beating me by one here. He's going to rest. Good game. Very well played. Very well played. Probably spent way too much time doing damage to his face 
when I could have been taking out those those dream eaters. I have to evaluate that one. I felt like I was playing it the right way. Don't! I'll try not to. Really looking forward to seeing whenever... Ooh, 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 yes, yes please. Yes, very much so. I can cast everything in my hand. Really looking forward to uh, Rank Matters. I don't know uh, if... At the time of this recording, uh, rank really doesn't mean much. Um, there was a recent update. I don't know how much that had no effect of changing how rank worked, but at this juncture, rank doesn't really matter. Oh, please don't be one of those people. Don't be one of those people that are telling me to play faster. And we will lightning strike your critter. I'm sure that has an awful lot to do with your thing. I'm guessing that is a black-white vampire deck that is built around life gain, which should be an interesting challenge. Neat, I have another one too. Hmm. Do I go for the steamkin or do I go for the lightning strike? I think I go for the lightning strike. Okay. <laughs> that feels like a wasted spell to me, but alright. Ah, damn pride mate. Good thing I got an answer to it. Now he's getting another point that he almost has nothing left in his hand. Okay, so we're gonna go to the steam can. We're gonna go to the pyromancer. My suspicion is he's got things like seal away in his hand. So let's test that theory. And go in with just the Pyromancer. Okay. They have life on them. No, they don't. Okay. I was actually really convinced that he was going to have a seal away in his hand. Just wanted an angel. Cool. Love the I love the I love the splash artwork when it comes down. The entry art artwork that's awesome. The little animation. Oh wait, but wait, there's more. Oh, why couldn't it do two? So, well, I think I can still get this to work. I'll drop that down and kill his token. Takes the steamkin up to four four. Drop this steamkin. Drop the fanatical. And attack. I do have first strike, whereas he does not. Let's see what happens. He's gonna seal away. Okay. That's two. Take it up to five. Gains lifelink. That's the problem with that. But I need a good old lightning bolt. So this increases the damage from a white source. Oh, that's the concern. So, no, you cannot have that anymore. I'm going to attack with a... 
What you gonna do? You see where I'm going, right? Because I'm gonna do first strike damage and then I'm gonna punch you in the face. Works for me. I should have attacked with both to make sure I got land make sure I got damage down through. Another chain whirler. And we're gonna go down with both chain whirler and the steam pin. So no matter which one he blocks with, it's gonna kill it. Serious debate going on there. Okay. Down to eight. So unless he's got Settle the Wreckage in this deck, which he very well might. He's gonna st he's gonna steal away the steam can. I don't think that saves him. It most certainly does not save him. And I'm gonna go again. At this point, if he doesn't block this, all I have to do is do the fanatical firebrand to kill him. He has to block this. No, I'll cancel. I'm going to wait. He's quite literally a lightning strike away from losing. And he quits. The power of the red deck wins. That's why a lot of people are super annoyed at the deck. I know, especially if you're only recent into Magic, all red decks are always so overpowered. They have been doing this for as long as I've been playing Magic. So way back in the, I started playing in, in Unlimited. Um, you had things like Lightning Bolt and Fireball and Disintegrate and Forks and. Siobhan Dragons, or Shivan Dragons that were coming in. So, like, Red Deck Wins has been a thing since the, the, the early, early hands, uh, early, early days of, of Magic. I am absolutely going to keep that. So, while I empathize with your plight of how to deal with the Red Deck, there are, like, for example, my Mono Green Stompy deck eats this deck alive. Uh, and the reason for it is very simple. It's, this, it, it's because... My creatures are so big uh, in a mono uh, green stompy deck that by the turn three, turn four, I have creatures so big that stop the aggro. And ooh, this is a Drake's deck. This should be interesting. So I'm gonna hold on to the. Ooh, I'm gonna hold on to my lightnings as much as I want to kill that thing. He's gonna get a Drake out. Oh, I need it to go away. I am going to hold on to these, because what's going to end up happening, he's either going to get a Drake up in the air, he's going to get a Rekindling Phoenix, or he's going to get, not the Rekindling, or yeah, or Rekindling Phoenix, or he might end up with the uh, the Arc-like Phoenix. That's the other one that's really the big one, that he'll, he'll intentionally graveyard it to then be able to pull it back and attack it with haste. So I need to be able to deal with it. Oh, he's waiting on me. Sorry. Hmm. Let's see how spicy he is. Take the damage. He's gonna let me draw. No mana in that. Really interesting. There's the Drake. We were kind of waiting on that. So let's answer the Drake, shall we? We need that and that to make it go away. And he's down to six. I love the idea of having the Phoenix. Just, I can't really am surprised I did not get any more mana out of that.
No, you know, I'm sitting here looking at, oh, no, I need one more mana to do. I was just like, maybe I should have done Chain War and then the Lightning Strike, but it was, I don't have enough mana to be able to pull off both. And he concedes. He sees the futility of playing against the red deck wins. All right, I'll give you one more. That one actually went really, really quick. As red, uh, it, when you're playing mono red, they tend to go relatively quick. They really do. So we'll give you one more to really get a feel for this one. And then in the next video, we will actually take it into the competition and see how it does. Now, it's got a really high standard. Uh, if you've not seen it yet, my... Uh, uh, the Mono Blue Tempo one, I took seven wins. It was my first time doing that with any deck that I've ever built. Um, so the red deck one's got a, some big shoes to fill. Firebrand, Firebrand, Lightning Strike. Ooh, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> no, no life gain deck. I will not permit that to happen. Your little hawk can go away. In fact, I have answers for all of your little life gainers. <laughs> He's not going to be happy with me, because I'm going to do it again. See, the trick with the life gain decks, especially in the early game, if you can wipe out all they've got and they go through nothing, they have no card draw. Like, they have uh, Mentor the Meek, which is a, a potential uh, method for them. To card draw. I'm going to hold on to the lightning strikes. I really want to take out the rest of his creatures. Because once he gets down to nothing left in his hand, he's just top decking. Mm-hmm. There we go. Mm, no, he can have that. So we take out the problems, like him. And we attack. See what he does. It's gonna let us go through. Works for me. And then one of those things is gonna get lightning striked as it comes in. Mm, he'll gain the life on that. Healer's out. He's just literally just dumping his hand. What's he going to do? He's going to take the damage. Swing and see what happens. He does have the life linker there to kind of help balance that off, and he'll gain a life here. Ugh. History of the Such a good card. Such a good card. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to... Hmm... Hmm. That was a mistake. Because I really wanted to discard that land. And risk factor him again. So I'm going to hold this. He is going to try to swing in for here. And I'm going to take out a couple of creatures. Probably the healer's hawk. And her. If she swings in with the, the vanguard. So I will block the vanguard. Pride of Conquerors, huh? Yeah, we are getting behind on this. Where's the chain roller when we need it? My goodness. So we're going to risk factor him one more time. And probably lose. Yep, he knows what he knows what's up. He knows what's up. Tried to keep up with him, but unfortunately, those critters way too wide, way too fast. 
All right, so you've seen the best and worst of the uh, the mono red aggro deck. Uh, you have seen some of the weaknesses and where if decks just get way too wide like that, it just can't handle it. It's designed to go in really, really quick. And then, of course, you've seen some really quick victories out of it as well. So do hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if there are other tweaks that you would think that this deck would need, by all means, let me know. I'd love to hear them. Um, drop a comment and a like below if you wouldn't mind, and that'd actually be super helpful. Uh, I do have a Patreon if you are so inclined. That is patreon.com slash oldguygaming. MTGA. So until the next video, guys, we will see you in the arena.